In this video, I will introduce you to real-time communication with SignalR. Before diving into the technical details, let me introduce you to a small application I've created using Blazor WebAssembly. It's an application that can be used during retrospective meetings at the end of a sprint. For those familiar with Agile environments, you know that at the end of each sprint, the whole team gathers to share feedback on the completed sprint. In this application, we will have three columns where we can hint of things that went well, something that could be improved, and the actions we can take. Typically, each team member can add their own items to these columns. So for example, they can add team spirit in the column for things that went well. They can also add items like improved testing in the column for something to be improved. And suggest action to be taken can go in the last column. So currently, the application is not fully functional yet. So it will be interesting if whatever a hinter on the board could be displayed in real time for everyone. So to achieve this, we will use SignalR. SignalR is a tool that enables real-time communication between a client and a server. Since Blazor WebAssembly runs on the client side, I've chosen to host the application in a ASP.NET Core application, which will serve as the backend. For that, I checked the ASP.NET hosted option during the project creation. We could have used a web API instead. So my solution consists of three projects. The client project is the Blazor WebAssembly application. The server project, which is the ASP.NET Core application hosting my Blazor app. And the share project contains classes used by both projects. So we have retrospective item and item type, which represent the application model. So to use SignalR, we need to perform configuration both on the client and server side. On the server, we will configure a hub that will manage communication between the client and the server. On the client side, we will install a client library and create an object to interact with this hub. That's the general overview, so now let's configure the server. First, I will create a new folder called hubs. Then within this folder, I will create a new class named team retro hub to represent our hub. A hub itself is not very useful. It needs methods to function. So to send a message to the client, we'll create a method and name it send retro item. The purpose of this method is to allow users to send a new item to the server. And to send this information from the server to the client, we will use the client's property of the hub. It exposes several members, but the one we're interested in is whole, which allows sending messages to all connected clients using the send async method. However, there's an issue with this approach. We have to specify the client method to call as a string, which is not very convenient. So we will abandon this method and use the hub differently. Instead, we will define an interface named iRetroHub. This interface will allow us to define all the client methods. We will start by defining a method called ReceiveItem, which will enable the client to receive a new item from the server. Next, we will add another method called UpdateClientCount, which will allow the client to receive the number of connected clients. Now that we have our interface, we will modify the hub to use another type of hub called strongly type hub. So we will pass our item retro hub interface. By doing this, the whole property of clients will expose the method we've defined in our interface. This will help us avoid errors with the client method names. So we can use receive item to send an item to all the connected clients. Next, we can use virtual method on the hub. 
So we will override the unconnected method, which is called when a client connects to the hub. So we will create a new static variable to count the number of the connected clients. When a client connects, we will increment discount and use the client's property to send a message to all the connected clients. So in the same way, we will override the onDisconnected method. We will decrement the number of clients and again send the update to the client for the new count when someone disconnects. So now how hub is properly defined. So to finalize it, we need to go to the program.cs file. There we will register signal har in the service container by calling the add signal har method on the services property. Next, we need to expose an endpoint so that the client can communicate with the hub. So for this, we will use the method map hub and this method is generic. So we need to specify our interface, which is the high team retro hub. And we need to give a name to the endpoint. So I'm going to call it team retro hub. So with that, the server now is complete. We can now move on to configure the client part. So first of all, we need to add the signal har client library. We didn't do this on the server side as the library is already included. So to do that, we need to install the microsoft.asp.net core.signalhar.client package. Next, we will create a service to abstract the communication with signal har. So we'll create a class called signal R service. And this class will require a hub connection object to communicate with signal R. After that, we will define two events. The first event will allow us to receive retrospective items and we will call it on item received. The second event will enable us to receive the number of connected clients and we will call it on update client count. To handle the URL, we will inject an object of type navigation manager. This will manage and query URLs. Now let's define a method called star connection to connect to the hub. In this method, we will use our hub connection object. If it doesn't exist yet, we will create a new instance using the hub connection builder class. The with URL method will define the address of the hub endpoint. We know the relative URL, but to get the complete URL, we will use the to absolute URE method and pass the URL of the endpoint defined on the server. Next, we need to register under that will be invoked when the hub method are called. The first handler concerns the retrospective items and we will use the on method on the app connection object. So it's generic and we will specify the return type as retrospective item. The first parameter is the name of the app method, which is receive retro item. And the second parameter is the handler that will be triggered when the app method is invoked. We will receive a retrospective item and trigger the on item received event. So let's register a second handler that will allow us to receive the count of connected clients. The app method is called update client count. And when we have the count, we can trigger our on update client count event and pass the count. Finally, we can start the connection using the start connection method on the app connection object. 
Now to send a new item to the server, we'll define a second method called send message. First, we'll check if our hub has been created. Then we will use the send async method on the app connection to send the message. So the first parameter we we'll specify is the app method. And the second parameter will be the object we want to send. And next, in order to manage the connection properly, we need to make sure we dispose of the hub when necessary. So we can implement the I async disposable interface. So in the dispose async method, we'll dispose of the hub. And the service is now set. But before using it, we will register it with the dependency container. So in the program.cs file, we need to add the signal R service to the services collection. Now let's go back to the view that displays the retrospective board. Here on the index page, we'll start by injecting the service. And we're going to call the injected instance signal har service. And the first thing we need is to display the number of connected clients. For that, I will add a new element here and add a label like something like participant. And I will create a new variable called participant and use it here. Now in the on initialize async method, we will start a connection to the server. To do that, we will use the signal hard service instance and call the start connection method. After that, we can register for different events. Let's start with the on update client count. So we will assign it a handler. When we receive the count, we will assign it to the participant variable and refresh the screen by calling the state as change method. We will do the same with the on item receive event. When we receive a new item, we will insert it in the list that display elements on the screen. So here also we will call the state as change method to refresh the view. Next, we will implement the dispose async method. So inside it, we will unsubscribe from event and remove the connection to the hub. In the add method, which is used when the user adds a new item, we will send that item to the server. So we remove the line that added to the list since we already do that in the on item receive handler. And the client configuration is now complete. So we can test the application. I'm going to set a breakpoint in our hub in the unconnected async method to see if we're properly connecting to the hub. I'm going to launch the application. As I just connected, we can see that I indeed reached the unconnected async method and there is only one participant in this retrospective. Now I'm going to open a second tab to simulate a second participant. As you can see, I also reach 
the unconnected async method again. Now we have two clients connected and we can see it in the application. So now let's write something. I'm going to set a breakpoint to reconfirm that I'm passing through the hub. I'm going to add a new item to the what went well column. So as we can see, I reached the hub and the server received the item. And now it's going to send it to all the connected clients. So I will continue. And indeed, both clients receive the same message. So next, I'm going to add an action item. And there we go. As you can see, it updates in real time on the other side. I can add another item here and real time update works well. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. You will find the link to the source code in the description. Feel free to watch other tutorials on my channel. See you in the next video. Goodbye.